Lubabalo, um, Mr. Squela, it's uh, seven minutes past 10. Can we get an indication of whether we have a quorum or not? Mr. Squela. Is Mr. Squela not in the meeting? And Lisa, where is Mr. Squela? He is in the meeting, Chairperson. I'm not sure why he maybe is unable to meet, but he is in the meeting. He must unmute that up and indicate whether we have quorum or not for the meeting so that we are able to start. Can you call him? Please. I'm calling him chairperson. Yeah. I have got a problem in a credit slab. Eh. So uh, the question is do we have quota? Yes, the person we do have a quota, chair. Oh, okay. That's what we wanted to ascertain before we could uh, start with the meeting um, of today. So if you say we have a quorum, can you please beam the agenda on the screen? Can you please beam the agenda of the meeting on the screen? Oh, okay, yes, Chaperson. Um. Yes, Chaperson. It's on the screen, Chair. It's not there. Yes, then we got it. Uh... Uh, honorable members, uh, let me take this opportunity and greet all of you to the meeting and welcome uh, the minister and her team uh, to our meeting. I Yeah, so that's the uh, agenda uh, before us uh, for the for our meeting today is agreed uh, in our previous meeting, um, which we had uh, last week, uh, that uh, we need to have the minister uh, to our meeting. So the minister is here. Uh, I saw uh, she has logged uh, with her team uh, to the meeting. Um, there is five points on the agenda. Can we move for the adoption of the agenda?
I move for the adoption, Chair. Ngola. Okay, Honorable Ngola, can we get a seconder? Honorable Muela, I see your hand is up. I second, Honorable Chair, that we adopt this agenda. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Members. Uh, Honorable Minister, uh, from the onset, uh, I wish to state uh, categorically that the committee's <coughs> reasons for inviting you uh, to the committee briefing is to raise concerns to you uh, with regards to the New York project. Uh, I would like to assure you that it is not in the committee's interest to be involved in the decisions that the minister takes in the department. However, for this particular case, we were caught off guard by media inquiries about the committee's recommendations on New York report, whose implementation was said to have a direct bearing on the latest actions of the precautionary suspension of the DG. This was reported from an interview with the minister's spokesperson. A public representatives, as public representatives, we felt duty bound to protect the integrity of parliament simply because none of those recommendations have been implemented to date. Yet it was reported that the cause of action the minister has taken was to do with the committee's oversight report. It was surprising that it didn't occur to the minister that the committee should be taken into confidence and be made aware when its recommendations were being varied. The committee feels uh, that this is what has happened. Minister ought to have alerted the committee of a new evidence suggesting the implementation of the current DG or that the committee's recommendations were to be set aside first. This is regarded as total disregard of the hard work that the committee has put into oversight visit, having spent taxpayers' money traveling for a verification oversight visit to New York, only to have our findings thrown out of the window. The committee and parliament are being undermined and it cannot happen under our watch. Where's still a honorable minister, nothing has been done to hold the former DG accountable, despite the fact that he had snubbed the committee by not having availed himself, or at least to have the courtesy to officially render his apology to the committee during its visit in New York. It must be emphasized that the committee had recommended that the president be approached to recall the former APR instead his tour of duty was extended. The minister saw no need to at least ask him to explain himself on his role in the procurement processes relating to the New York project, while he has still contracted or was still contracted to the department. To our surprise, just after his arrival here from New York and now on retirement, we hear that the current DG is put under precautionary suspension due to the irregular expenditure on the New York project. As per the response of the spokesperson to the media, what a coincidence. This sequence of events, uh, honorable members, uh, brings about many questions. Why was the former uh, DG not asked to account on his part on the New York project? Has the minister asked both to account on their different roles? Why has the minister not taken action against those others listed in the minister's response to the speaker? Ironically, the minister's responses to the speaker on the same report are noted to be very short and dismissive. This is unacceptable. It goes so, it goes to show how little if at all the recommendations of their report are regarded. We will not hesitate 
to refer it back to the department for adequate responses. It must be emphasized that irregular expenditure in the New York project must be seen in the context of non-compliance with procurement processes. This is why the AG directed the department to record the payment of 118 million in the register of irregular expenditure. This matter was thoroughly explained to the committee during its oversight visit to the department in August 2019. Incidentally, this is where the CFO of the department said that he did not agree with the AG's findings. The committee notes that there is serious misinterpretation of the irregular expenditure in the department as opposed to the definition provided in the PFMA. In conclusion, uh, honorable uh, members, the committee would like to reiterate the fact that it is not about who should or should not be suspended in your department minister. What matters most is that the committee's recommendations should be implemented in their entirety and the implicated officials should be subjected to disciplinary action. The minister is at liberty to share any new evidence pointing to any other official who may have contributed to the unlawful award of the tender of the New York, if any. So that's my opening remark, eh, honorable members, as guided by our discussions eh, in the meeting eh, last week. Eh, I welcome all of you to our meeting. Without wasting time, eh, honorable members, eh, I will allow the minister to brief the portfolio committee on this particular matter not unless honorable members want to raise anything before the minister. Thank you very much. Honorable Banza, I see your hand is up. Yes, Chair, thanks very much and good morning to all honorable members. No, Chair, I think you have uh, outlined uh, the committee's uh, issues very well. And I think, uh, Let's, uh, I propose, let's allow the minister to respond and then you will guide us as the way forward after, after she has done so. Uh, Honorable Minister, uh, the platform is yours. Thank you uh, very much. Chairperson and honorable members. Uh, Chairperson, your statement uh, has made very serious allegations about me and uh, my conduct both toward the committee and parliament. And I would request that you do refer uh, those concerns to parliament so that I can be properly investigated. I, I think it's very important uh, for uh, my own uh, professional reputation and standing uh, that such a referral uh, is made because what you have said is I regard as extremely serious and I regret that that is the view of the portfolio committee uh, with respect to myself. I am not sure in the context of your remarks exactly uh, how you would expect me to uh, proceed I had prepared a report on each of the recommendations uh, that were in the report I received from the speaker in December last year. And that is uh, what I shall speak to. But I do request that the remarks you have made, particularly about my conduct, be referred to the speaker. I, I do believe it's very important and I would like Parliament to examine whether indeed uh, I am uh, as accused uh, in terms of my conduct. Chairperson, your, uh, the committee's report of November 2020 had a number of recommendations that uh, international relations and cooperation uh, had to uh, consider. I 
the need perhaps to be uh, guided by you, and I'm sure when we have the hearing in Parliament, uh, we'd be able to assist. Uh, they'd be able to help uh, me. Um, I understand the uh, report as adopted by Parliament as one that I must take seriously, and I certainly do so, but I have not understood it as almost a directive as is contained in a statute or legislation, which is the strong arm of the uh, directive uh, given to uh, members of the executive by uh, Parliament. Nevertheless, uh, we have taken the recommendations from the committee seriously, given the very hard work uh, that the committee had done. And uh, I shall respond to each of them uh, seratum. Firstly, the first recommendation related to the uh, fact that uh, the permanent representative was absent from New York when the portfolio committee uh, carried out its oversight. And it was recommended that we should implement consequence management against the permanent representative. And the committee report indicates, should it be found that he has neglected his duties. I wish on that recommendation one to report as follows. The matter was taken up with Ambassador Machila immediately after the concerns of the portfolio committee were brought to our attention. It emerged in uh, the course of this matter being taken up that complicated circumstances mitigated against the ambassador being able to host the committee. Firstly, the dates for the oversight visit had been postponed twice before, meaning that at each time arrangements by the mission needed to be amended. Second, for purposes of planning, Ambassador Machila had received prior approval for vacation leave, which he had properly applied for, and permission thereby to leave his country of accreditation. And this was done well in advance of the visit by the committee. And on the basis of that permission, the ambassador had purchased personal economy class airline tickets for himself and his family to return to South Africa on the applied for period. Third, when the final dates for the oversight visit were confirmed, work pressures and future work commitments, including in the Security Council, which at the time had a very complicated and demanding work program, along with the fact that the peak holiday period meant that the airline required that the ambassador and his family forfeit their tickets and purchase new personal tickets at double the cost of the tickets purchased earlier. Ostensibly due, it was reported to a change in, in economy class travel as no tickets would be available at economy class if the dates were changed. This then meant that Ambassador Machila was left with little choice but to return to South Africa as per previous permission agreed with the department. Since the Ambassador had received prior approval from head office to leave his station, and could not reasonably be expected to suffer personal financial loss due to the changes in the oversight visit report, uh, uh, oversight visit. The need for consequence management under the circumstances is not anticipated. However, we do accept as is indicated in the committee report, that it was clearly the responsibility 
of Ambassador Machila at the time to notify the committee that he would not be available due to personal circumstances during the committee's oversight visit. He was reprimanded by head office for not having forewarned the committee in this regard. That is with respect to the first recommendation. On the second, it is indicated that we should facilitate that Ambassador Machila present himself before the committee as soon as the committee communicates the desired time for such a meeting. We indicate in our response that Ambassador Machila would be available to appear before the committee at a mutually convenient date and time to explain the above mentioned circumstances in more detail should the committee still deem this necessary. On recommendation three, it was recommended that in view of the findings in the Auditor General's report of 1718, on irregularities in the procurement of accommodation in New York and the implications of the permanent representative in the role both as accounting officer during initiation of the New York pilot project and as the current head of mission to the UN in New York. The minister should consider requesting the president to recall the permanent representative to protect the integrity of the country and the efforts towards economic diplomacy. It should be noted that Ambassador Matila was serving the last year of his term as permanent representative, which coincided in 2020 at that period with South Africa's tenure as an elected member of the Security Council. We found the need for continuity in the responsibilities of managing the work of a complicated and difficult responsibility needed to be part of our consideration as we considered the recommendation of the Portfolio Committee. Ambassador Machila has now completed his term as South Africa's permanent representative and is back in the country. Our investigation into the circumstances entirely surrounding the irregular expenditure are ongoing. And all internal processes related to responding to the outcome of the Auditor General's report are underway in the department. On recommendation four, it stated that we should investigate internal control deficiencies, which had led to lack of oversight by the department to ensure compliance with laws and regulations on the procurement processes for the New York pilot project. We respond that the department has reviewed its supply chain management processes and has put in place controls to ensure that there should be no recurrence of the challenges previously experienced. Management remains seized with the matter of improving all oversight measures within our department and ensuring that there's compliance with relevant laws and regulations. It is my belief we are not fully where we would like to be, but we are working hard to ensure that we do improve in this regard. We have an action plan that is being implemented. The ministry gets regular reports. We are also closely working with the audit committee, as well as looking at the further improvement of skills and capacity as previously advised by the portfolio committee in the finance branch. <clears throat> Recommendation five indicates that the department should explain why in previous briefings, 
the department created an impression that it was in the process of purchasing a site in brackets land in New York, while in actual fact, it had been found that it was purchasing an existing building. The department indicated that it had made interchangeable references to the purchase of a site or a property. And this might have been understood to mean vacant land, when in fact, the intention of the department was to purchase an existing building, which they had anticipated would be demolished for the construction of new office accommodation. The department indicates in their response that there was no intention at all to mislead the committee in any way. On recommendation six, the committee asked that we furnish the committee with the names of all officials who were involved in all the stages of the procurement of the New York project. And we should explain whether the investigation conducted by the department has determined if those officials should not be held liable for the irregular expenditure incurred in the project. Our response provides the following members of the bid committee as the officials who were involved in the procurement process for the New York project. Firstly, the bid evaluation committee, which had Ms. Ms. Pafani as chairperson, Mr. Makuva, Mr. Munro, and Ms. Abrams as additional members. The Departmental Bid Adjudication Committee, which had Mr. Ramashau as chairperson, Mr. Malcolmson, Ms. Shongwe, Mr. Mahache, who is deceased, Mr. Mlekwa, Mlekwa, also deceased, Ms. Africa, Ms. Schreiber, Ms. Mashau, Ms. Bengu and Mr. Genge as members. Further say, following the Auditor General's management report for financial year 2017-18 on the New York project, a further investigation was conducted by a service provider. Open Water Investigations was appointed to confirm the irregularity and identify the officials that could have contributed to the irregularities mentioned in the AXA report so that they are held accountable. Implementation is under consideration by the department to afford the implicated officials an opportunity to make representations as to why they should not be subjected to disciplinary action. Given Chairperson, uh, this response in particular, I wish to indicate that there has been at no point any indication by me that the action taken thus far is implementation of the Portfolio Committee report. I've not made any such public statement as I indicated to you in the previous letter I wrote to you. I am uh, uncertain as to why, if I have not said something, uh, why the spokesperson uh, would say something such as you indicated. I am fairly astounded and uh, he will have to answer for himself. <clears throat> On recommendation seven, it indicates we should investigate and report on the causes of the five-year delay since 2014 for the securing of new suitable location of the two missions in New York. <clears throat> Our response from the department is that in 2015, the department put out a tender to procure property for the New York Chancery 
that is the consulate general and the permanent mission. However, the procurement process was found to have been irregular and the process was halted in 2018. The department has approached the High Court to set aside the awarding of the tender and judgment is still awaited. I believe, Chairperson, that with respect to that matter, the case was heard in October uh, 2020. The uh, sitting judge had indicated uh, that a ruling uh, would be provided prior to the end of the calendar year 2020. However, no judgment has been handed down as yet, and we are awaiting a judgment. The court term ended in 2020 on the 16th of December. Uh, we approached the Office of the Chief State Law Advisor to ask when we should anticipate a judgment. We've not been able to be given a definitive date, but we can confirm thus far no judgment has been handed down. Since the lease of the current chancery contract expired in 2014, the Consulate General and the Permanent Mission have been paying rent on a month-to-month -month basis, as the Portfolio Committee is fully aware, pending the acquisition of a new building. Attempts to search for temporary accommodation for the Chancery commenced again in 2019, and negotiations on finding a suitable, finding suitable temporary accommodation are at an advanced stage. Once all the legalities related to the accommodation identified have been cleared, the rental of a chancery will be implemented and finalized. In September 2020, head office again granted the mission the approval to identify suitable premises for the chancery. Three buildings were considered and the chancery previously occupied by the United Kingdom of Great Britain at 845 3rd Avenue was preferred. Negotiations commenced with the United Kingdom in September 2020 for South Africa to sublease two vacant floors in the building. Issues that needed to be finalized the legalities included the right of contract uh, termination should the prime landlord or sub-landlord default on their obligations, as well as the waiver of immunities and the right of access by the landlord or sub-landlord to the two floors in question without the permission of the tenant are the final elements that are being negotiated. The eighth recommendation was that we should fast track the procurement processes for the relocation of the two missions to a more suitable location. I've indicated what has been done uh, uh, to address this recommendation uh, in uh, the 2020 period in particular, and uh, mentioned that the recently earmarked preferred building namely that chancery previously occupied by the United Kingdom at 845 3rd Avenue is considered the most appropriate and representative building. The rental is also much cheaper at $37 per square foot compared to what is currently being paid, which is $62 per square foot. On the 20th, and 29th of January this year, representatives of the United Kingdom and South Africa met to resolve the impasse on outstanding issues in the draft sublease agreement. And agreement was reached on the owner's obligations and the waiver of immunities. The owners of the current premises, NYU Langone, 
have been notified about the intention of the mission and consulate general to relocate and have agreed. The department informs me that within the next two weeks, the sublease agreement should be ready for signature and considered in execution. Subject to approval of the draft agreement, it's expected that the relocation of the mission and the consulate general will be completed within the next 30 to 60 days, subject to all logistical aspects of the relocation. Recommendation nine, chairperson and members, stated that we should consider the need to have attaches at the consulate general in New York on civic work and trade and consult with departments of home affairs and of trade and industry and competition on the matter. The response follow-up has been made in respect of earlier correspondence that was directed to these departments and we still await uh, responses. Honorable members would appreciate uh, that all our departments, including our own, are all looking at international uh, assignments, uh, given the significant constraints which you would have seen in the budget presented by Minister Mboweni uh, yesterday. But we await responses from the relevant departments. Recommendation uh, 10 was that we should develop proper procedures for evaluating office accommodation in consultation with the Department of Public Works. The response from the department is that they are in ongoing deliberations and internal consultations with the department mentioned as recommended by the Portfolio Committee. Recommendation 11 stated that we should ensure regular updates on the work of the department in the United Nations Security Council and the African Union. The department has provided regular reports on the work of the department in the United Nations Security Council, as well as the African Union, and we will continue to do so as and when requested by the Portfolio Committee. These reports will also include our final assessment of South Africa's term as an elected member of the Security Council for the period 2019 to 2020 and our term as chair of the African Union for the year 2020. Recommendation 12 stated that we should consider having a transferred official responsible for administration located within Manhattan or close to the office premises to attend in a timeless manner to emergencies which need the officer's intervention. Our response from the department is this is an accommodation matter that the mission would have to address for the corporate services manager to move closer to the mission could have financial implications and may very well impact on the personal and family circumstances of the official concerned, which are unknown to us. So the change proposed has to be weighed against the priorities and requirements of the mission and the personal circumstances of the uh, official referred to. But we also have alerted the mission to the need to create appropriate mechanisms to be able to respond expeditiously to any emergency matter. Recommendation 13 stated that the department should consider an upgrade for ICT connectivity between headquarters and the New York mission. The upgrade, the response says, will be considered during the wireless, air, wireless area network upgrades of all DERCO sites. ICT connectivity for the missions and headquarters will be improved as part of our departmental 
ICT infrastructure modernization project, which is currently underway and led by our uh, CIO, supported by the acting DDG for corporate uh, services. Chairperson, those were the 13 recommendations, and that is the update that I'm able to provide at this time. And again, I humbly request, Chairperson, that the statement uh, you made uh, indicating my very poor conduct should please be referred to Parliament so that I may be properly investigated and able to defend myself. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister. Uh, on the latter part, you are not going to prescribe what the committee should do and committee should not do. And uh, we are going to move in this committee in unison as decided by all of us. So I think you must spare yourself from self-importance so that you are able to do our work uh, without hindrance because your utterances, I find them very arrogant. Honorable members, can I note hands? Uh, I see Honorable Velem Faba, uh, you are number one. Uh, Honorable Msane, you are number two. Uh, Honorable uh, Muela, you are number three, followed by Honorable Chaiti. Uh, Honorable M. Um, Shwe, uh, Honorable Ngosi, uh, Honorable Ngola, I see your hand is up, you follow. Uh, uh, Honorable Swartz, in that order, Honorable Members. Thank you very much. Sorry, uh, Chair. Ch Ch yes, you Honorable Mzan. No, no, no. Sorry. It's uh, Honorable Mpanza. You have uh, omitted me. Have I? Yes, Chair. Chair. Okay. Honorable Msane? I just, uh, I was just hoping before we get um, the questions or of, of clarity from the members, um, I heard from the minister that she had not directed the spokesperson. I was hoping we give him a platform if he's here to tell us what had happened for those so that when we interrogate or when we ask for the questions, we are clear on the matter because if the spokesperson spoke outside the office that he's mandated to speak on behalf, that becomes a crisis. Thank you, Chair. Are you suggesting that before honorable members, a, a Engage uh, the minister. The spokesperson must clarify. Yes, because the minister chairperson did highlight that uh, the spokesperson can answer for themselves. Mr. Lunga Nangelele. Uh, good morning, chair, and uh, and uh, to the members. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, chair, I I think if I can be provided. With um, sort of with information where I confirmed that the suspension of the director general was directly linked uh, to the uh, New York report, uh, I'd be happy to provide a, a, a report because even the 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 point we've been trying to make to the journalist was that. Uh, was to just confirm the the suspension of the DG, and of course the first thing I think newspaper to run with the issue of the New York was uh, Media Twenty Four, that then um, um, uh, others followed, but I do not recall anywhere where we I directly said that the suspension of the DG was linked to the New York. Um, 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 a report or to the portfolio uh, report, but I'm more than willing where I'm pointed exactly where I made th uh, those remarks. Thank you, Chair. What did you say when you responded to the media on this issue? It, it was to confirm uh, mostly, uh, Chairperson, the, that uh, it was to confirm that uh, the Director General 
uh, had, uh, had been uh, suspended as per the letter that uh, was circulated to the staff of the um, 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 to the staff of the Department of uh, International Relations and Cooperation. And that was the directive I was given by the minister that I confirm, uh, just only confirm the, 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 the suspension. Uh, Honorable Msan, there you have it. It's, it's okay, Chair. I think the members can have their time. Honorable Piper, you're the first on the list. Honorable Panza, you are within the list you know, of noted. Thank you, okay, Chairperson. Can I go, Chair? Yes. Okay, thanks, Chair. Chair, yes, as I, as I said in our previous meeting last week, uh, I do understand that uh, the current minister uh, must take the responsibility of what has happened as well. It, it is her department. But we should also be quite fair. You know, there was two ministers, and specifically Kwana Mashabane, and, and then um, Minister Sulu. You know, I, I really do believe that these two ministers um, has got much more to explain to us even than the current minister, Pandor, because I, I must be quite honest. Um, you know, the first minister, um, Kwana Mashabane, she, she was there that time when this whole thing started taking place. And when I was in the NCOP in international relations in the last five years before coming to the NA, these matters were already like um, where we were like, it was everything is just sidelined. And it can't be that a minister, because her term is over, um, they can now just go and sit aside and let the heat get to the other ministers. They must still be held accountable. And I mean, then the minister gets another cozy, another minister's position and um, she goes and sits and smiles there but what happens in New York is definitely part of the neglect from her side and I would like this committee to summon her to come in front of this committee um, I do understand uh, that Minister Pandor is now in, in charge and on, on duty but I, I still believe that we must you, you must see where this thing happened, when it happened and who was on duty when it happened and I really do believe, Che, um, that if we start from there, uh, we will uncover many more things. Thank you, Chairperson. Next. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Well, as the EFF, we predicted that uh, there might be this crisis of, she said, he said, with regards to what we found was being speculated, which is what we get today, that it's a speculation that the current DG is suspended uh, because of recommendations of New York. Uh, chairperson, we wrote a letter to the chairperson on the 13th of February as the economic freedom fighters uh, on the day when this thing blew out of control via the media and social media. And we had four questions, which we were hoping that uh, the minister would also help to clarify. The first one was exactly why is the current DG suspended? That's the first one. And the second one, um, what processes has the minister placed in, has in place so that whatever the DC or incorrect, um, whatever the DG is charged with does not take long as we have, might have seen with the previous CFO the, uh, with the current CFO, with his previous suspension in 2018, which took long and he came back to work as if nothing had happened. So what, what processes had the minister, does the minister have in place so that the DC does not take long? And to confirm that there are um, wrongdoings that the committee does not know about, regarding the current DG, 
It is as per the response which the minister sent to you uh, or to this committee that the DG is charged under the SMS chapter seven, if I'm not mistaken. So can we please be kept in the know what exactly are these misconducts and incapacity that the current DG is suspended based on. And then our third point chairperson was apart from the appointment of the acting DG, how does the minister plan that uh, targets of this department will be met? Because we know for a fact that come our first meeting with this current acting DG, we will be informed that I am new to this position I do not know, I will, I still need to catch my feet. I need to find out. So what measures apart from just appointing an acting DGI in place so that this committee is not taken back and has to wait for someone to pay for their school fees before they can catch up to the race. And then, um, what uh, the minister involved all right, um, and, well, there were four, but let me get to the response now from the minister with regards to, to the New York chairperson. Um, we are given names or the speaker also was given names. Um, we highlighted this previously because the oversight report was adopted in March and then by the, by the committee, and then it was adopted by parliament in November. And then the, in November 9th, minister received a letter from the speaker, which she responded in February to the speaker. Now her response, chairperson, mentions people's names who were involved in the BEC and the BAC meaning officials that were involved in this whole irregular uh, irregularity of this contract. Uh, what has happened to these people? Because we know as a committee for facts, Chairperson, that uh, Mr. Ramachau is still in the, is still in the, he's still at work, he's still working, he's not suspended or anything. So the four names of the BEC and the, and the okay, minus in the two that are deceased under the BAC, the eight names under the BAC, uh, including Miss Bernice Africa, who was also mentioned in our oversight report uh, with Mr. Ramachau, because as much as we look at recommendations, we must be able to look at the cases that build to get to us to the recommendations because Mr. Ramachau and Ms. Bernice Africa get mentioned quite a few times and it makes it clear that they were also part of the officials that were involved in the irregularities of this contract amongst others with the four and the eight. So what has happened, Chairperson, to the officials that were involved in this irregularity of this contract to date, noting the time that has elapsed till now, which is 2021. Number two, Chairperson, um, the, the DG, the, 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 the DG Machila, when the committee arrived at New York, we understand the explanation that um, the minister is giving us. We requested that we be forwarded, for example, now she's mentioning the leave application, she's mentioning flight cancellations. We understand that, but as the committee, we could foresee that those would be the, I don't want to call them excuses that we'll receive as the committee, um, but none of that information was forthcoming from the head office and Chairperson, if you go through the report, it says that 
the man was nowhere to be found because even the current Gigi could not attest to the fact that he had taken leave, which he had apply, applied for uh, a long time ago. I mean, we are not nut cases, Chairperson. We would understand if someone had taken leave and they, they've done that application quite a while ago, but as the committee, that information was not forthcoming. Even his superior could not account for him at that particular time. With regards to our, our recommendation, Chairperson, to say that um, he should be recalled, we made that recommendation, like the minister saying, they only had 12 months and felt that they needed to be continuity. I think the committee should have been informed that, you know what, your recommendation does not make sense because as a country, we need continuity and we prefer to continue with someone that you as the committee deem as unfit and us as your as the seniors of this man or since it's our it's in our office to decide that he continues or not we 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 recommend that he stays but no information came forth we only get information after the man has served his term now let me remind you chairperson um if the minister also can just assist us um, going through the information of Mr. Machila, while he was a DG of this department in 2013, there were allegations that were brought forward or that were going around Mr. Machila that he had irregularities of fraud and corruption with regards to funding of the ARF amounting to about half a billion, which the previous minister, as, Mr. F as, as Honorable Faber says, did nothing about it. So if maybe the minister can also tell us what happened of those allegations of Mr. Machila before he even got to be deployed to be an ambassador in the UNSC. Then my last one, um, Chairperson. So what must happen now? What, what, what must happen now with regards to Mr. Machila being a, in what do you call in retirement with all these things that point back to him and with all these allegations that have happened since 2013 moving up to now we are in 2021. Are we saying as the, as the committee and the department that it is okay because it's 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 showing now even with these officials that were named as being involved in something which the AG found as irregular, they are still working, they are still benefiting from taxpayers' monies. Is it okay that someone remains in their post or in their position with facts that these person? are involved in irregularities in contracts. They are flouting supply chain management because currently Chairperson year in year out since we started in this committee in 2019, this department is getting irregularities for flouting supply chain management processes for doing the same errors that were found prior to our term. I'm sure it even happened prior to 2013. So what must happen with these people that we are still relying on their financial reports till today, Chairperson. Thank you very much. In that order, honorable members. Thank you, honorable chair. Greetings, honorable members um, and the minister. Chair, let me start by welcoming your remarks, um, your opening remarks. We, you, you have made a number of issues which are very key and uh, we support you, you on those remarks because it, uh, those remarks were not are not just your remarks, but it's what, it, it is what has transpired in our last uh, meeting. So what I'm trying to say, Chair, is that um, the remarks you presented here as part of the opening remarks are the remarks of the committee. Secondly, Chair, 
let us agree that um, the committee still stands by its recommendation, uh, in particular on the New York issue, that uh, um, uh, where, where there is a need, consequence management must be applied. We still confirm that as this committee, irrespective of who is he or who is she or who's, whosoever, but anybody that has acted against the policies, against the laws and all that uh, within the department, uh, we want to confirm today, Honorable Minister, that consequence management must be applied without any favor, without any anything. We are still committee, committing ourselves as a committee on that one. Another matter, Chairperson, that I think as a concern I must raise here in this committee is that um, in, in one of our meeting, portfolio committee meeting, when we presented this report, the New York report, the decision or the promise made to the committee by the Honorable Minister was that um, she will go through the report and she will come back to the committee regarding any development of this report and on this uh, New York Spaza Shop saga. From where I am, I was still waiting as a member of this committee for the development before any action taken by the department or by the minister. Because it was the decision of one of our meeting as a committee that the minister will go through and she will definitely come back to the portfolio committee to brief us on what uh, has transpired based on the report. But to my surprise, Chairperson, it didn't happen like that. So it's one of the concerns that I think we must raise with the honorable minister that to me, it seems like this committee is being undermined because a decision was taken. And now on the part of the department, the, the minister is now implementing some of the decision, probably some of the, as she has outlined now, that uh, is part of our, the recommendation. So those recommendations are being implemented without the knowledge of the committee. And Chairperson, I want to marry today, I'm, I'm marrying uh, Honorable Msani. Um, 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 on a number of issues that, that, that she has raised. Uh, but I'm, on a, I'm marrying her in, 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 in community of property to say one honorable chair, the issue of um, the ambassador, when, when, when the delegation went to, to, to New York, the ambassador who were told she was nowhere to be found. That was the report we got. And even after that, after, after the, that visit, we asked Uguti, where was, the, where was the ambassador? We were told that she was nowhere to be found. And apparently she was on leave, as the minister is saying now, who approved the leave. It was, it was, it was, it was uh, we, we were not told and all that. So, but today I see, I, I, it seems like there's a, there's a contradiction of, 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 some, of some sort, because in that meeting, nobody was able to account regarding the whereabouts of the ambassador. We understand that there were logistics involved, prior arrangement and all that. We even asked the DG, if you still remember honorable members, we even asked the DG, who are, who, who, where, if, 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 you, if, you, if you apply for a leave, who approves your leave as an ambassador? Only to realize that the DG does not approve the leave according to the report we got in that meeting. Now, we even raised a matter to say, no, this matter must be taken up with the principals the political principles, because it can be correct that the DG will not know 
where is that one? Where is that one? It's like it's like a contradiction of some kind. So I want to raise this matter today that to me it's like it's, it's a contradiction of what we got previously in 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 in, in that meeting. Che. My concern and our concern, as we have raised even uh, pre in, in our previous meetings, that it looks like because in that in those recommendations and as per what the minister has indicated now, it's not only one person who must be taken into task regarding consequence management. Why not these other people who are involved in this report? Because all of them, they must be taken into task. All of them, they must be charged. So why only those ones now and not these other ones who were reported uh, of negligence and all that? So these are my issues that I thought I must raise. But lastly, Chairperson, I think it, mu it must be raised here today that we had to postpone our last meeting. We had to postpone our last meeting, our engagement, because of the non-availability of the executive of the department. And in future, we'll request that should the, the minister be engaged somewhere, can she therefore delegate somebody who have got two deputy ministers? Can she therefore delegate one of, the, one of those two deputy ministers to come because uh, they are part of uh, 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 um, the collective of that department. So that we cannot be stuck as a portfolio committee on issues of importance, on issues that we think we need to be clarified on and, uh, and, and, and the public at large. So these are my issues, Chairperson, that I thought I must raise to this meeting in confirming what we have discussed in our previous portfolio committee last week. Thank you very much. Honorable members, in that order. Honorable Chair, thank you very much. Um, I think I, I also welcome your, your welcoming remarks. Um, and at the same time, welcome the responses that uh, the Honorable Minister has uh, provided the committee. However, Chair, there, there are four issues that I want to raise. Firstly is that when it was realized that the media frenzy around the suspension of the current DG on precautionary basis started two weeks ago. Narabun Kosi, we are losing you. Honorable Ngozi? But not intervene. We lost you. Correct. Honorable Ngozi, we lost you. Uh, can you start afresh? We did not get what you were saying because of breaking. OK, Correct. my apologies, sir. Yeah. Am I audible now? Yes. Okay. Continue. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying that well, I welcome your remarks and uh, welcome the fact that the minister has responded to the report um, and I've, I've said that there are four issues that I want to raise the first of which is that when when there was a media frenzy that started two weeks ago that linked the suspension of the current DG on a precautionary basis to our report on New York in that period why did the department not intervene to correct that because ourselves as a portfolio committee through you chair were, was also interviewed to clarify what the report continued. When this was realized, at least the department should have intervened to correct that narrative and change it so that the real reasons for the precautionary suspensions are provided. In the absence of that or a counter that suggests otherwise, the, 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 the fact remains that everybody in the country, the media included, is under the impression that the current DG is suspended, linked to our reports on New York. And that is why you have had the responsibility to go and clarify it uh, publicly. 
So I don't think it is helpful uh, for purposes of this meeting to, to ask the media liaison person to, to respond on his own. I think what, what we expect is that the executive should have seen that this matter is getting out of hand and requires that it be put in correct perspectives so that a narrative that is wrong in the opinion of the department is corrected. It continued right up to the day of the meeting last week and even thereafter over the weekend. So I think that's something that needs, that needs to be clarified. Secondly, as regards Mr. Machila, my specific questions are, Ambassador Machila, is he retired? Uh, meaning that he's no longer in the employ of the, of the department uh, or is he back in the department? Because if he's retired, <clears throat> a different process will be required to, to ensure that he comes to the committee. But if he's back in the department, it is easier. And I seem to have read that he has returned to head office somewhere in the initial responses. But related to that, my, my, my question would be, why did it take long for the department to actually realize that Ambassador Machila was one of the main actors in the New York project uh, procurement process and therefore needed to be answerable, uh, I mean, to, to account for his responsibilities there too, uh, to the department and, and perhaps to us as, as a committee. The third point here is uh, around New York itself. I, I welcome the fact that the minister is saying that there are internal investigations that are taking place. What we need to know firstly is what, what are the terms of reference of those uh, uh, investigations? Who is doing the investigation? Is it internally driven or is it externally driven? I will have problems if it is internally driven, given the atmosphere in the department that uh, we have been told over and over again around intimidation of witnesses, around people not willing to, to avail themselves to give evidence because they fear that uh, they will be reprimanded. So whether it's internal, if it's internal, then there, there are those difficulties unless there are checks and balances or there are measures taken to ensure that such doesn't replace, replace itself. If it is external, let us know who is doing the investigation. And the duration of the investigation. This matter has been seized with the committee for long, and I think parliament. We need to know when this matter is going to be brought to finality so that uh, we close uh, uh, the issues relating to it. The third point related to that is, are those implicated in the New York report placed on precautionary suspension to ensure non-interference with witnesses, with processes, while the investigation takes place. It is standard procedure, though not required by law, but it's standard practice that uh, whoever is investigated is requested, requested to vacate so that uh, the process becomes objective, transparent and open and is free from interference by those that may, weak, may yield power in, in uh, uh, the department. The fourth issue chair is, we had a meeting with the internal audit committee on the 11th of December, where they presented uh, on uh, the performance of the department. In, in their view, uh, one of the things that I, I noted for that meeting is that in terms of internal control and in particular risk management, while there is a notable uh, improvement, it is clear that senior management in the department and that is DG and all the DDGs do not attend the risk management uh, uh, committee meeting even when they are invited uh, to do so. And uh, it was the view of the internal auditors that this matter 
needed uh, serious intervention. So my, my question then would be, has that situation changed? And if it has changed, are uh, DDGs and senior managers now attending uh, the internal uh, risk and audit uh, meetings of, of the department? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Ngozi. In that order, Honorable Members? Uh, thank you very Good much, morning. Chair. Good morning and thank you, Chair. I'm number five, sorry. Ola, please wait your turn, Honorable please. Member. May I proceed, Chair? Proceed, Honorable JD. Thank you, Chair. I'm going to put my video off, Chair, just because of connectivity. I don't want to be misled in translation. Thank you. Okay. Chair, at the onset, let me just start off by saying this. Let us not be naive. The suspension of the DG is definitely linked to the New York pilot project. There's no way that anybody can try to mislead us in thinking that this happened out of the blue, out of the ordinary. The suspension of the DG, the New York pilot project report, all of this is intertwined and it's out there in the public domain and everybody reads it as such. There is no separation from the New York pilot project uh, recommendations and the suspension of the DG. They are being linked, whether people like it or not. Secondly, Chair, I will also press on record and confirm, as you said in your opening remarks, the disappointment of us as a committee to have read about the suspension or the caution suspension of the DG via the media. That is unacceptable, Chairperson. The reason I say this is that this PC conducted the oversight to New York to assist the department. Hence, the minister's actions, rightfully or wrongfully, but her actions now can be justified due to the fact that this portfolio committee went on an oversight, a fact-finding mission to see what went wrong. Surely, the portfolio committee deserved, at the very least, a courtesy by the minister informing us of her actions just so that it is working in good faith with her department and the committee. So Chair, I also want to deal with the minister's responses. And I must say this much, Chairperson, having perused through the minister's initial response sent, which was very vague, and had she had given us the type of responses she did now verbally, it might have assisted the community to have a better understanding as to what her actions were. But that being said, Chairperson, let me deal with 2.1. Now, in 2.1, in response to, in response by the minister, we must be clear. The minister has given us reasons regarding the absence, in her words, of the ambassador. The committee was very clear. It wasn't the absence, but the ambassador having absconded. Colleagues before me have mentioned that when we were at the meeting upon our arrival at the mission, the officials that were present were also at a loss. And the second in charge had to fumble around himself to apologize to us as to the non-attendance of the ambassador. Chair, you will clearly recall that we even made a call to the DG, who himself has said he was unaware that the ambassador was on leave. But Chair, there's a twist in this regarding the leave. I understand the minister's explanation of the cost to him personally and the fact it was peak time and that it will have an impact with his family. And Chair, 
I'm noting this because what the minister has said has repercussions. Because you need to tie 2.1 together with 2.3. Because in 2.1, we are told that he has a right, he has a responsibility, it's his family, uh, he applied properly, he did everything. So if all of this was done as he has informed the minister, why is it neither the DG nor the 2IC in New York could furnish us with all of this, all of this information if he had applied in sufficient time for all of this. I also must inform you, Chairperson, via you to the minister, that the delay was at no given time the responsibility of the committee members. The delay was by the department as well as parliament itself. And that's the reason why Chairperson, the members of the portfolio committee also sacrificed their December break when we were told that we can only go on this after parliament has a dozen. And we don't have a problem with that because we went to do our oversight. We don't mind going during our recess period. It seems like this animal farm mentality that some are more equal than others. Also, Chairperson, I hear the minister when she says that he had purchased tickets and all of that. If it was important enough, his family could have flown back to South Africa and it only meant him delaying his flight, not his entire family to have incurred as much expenses as it does now seem to be by canceling everyone's flight. We didn't need his entire family to be sitting with us at the mission. We just needed his presence there because we still believe he plays a pivotal role and he could give us answers to questions that the oversight committee needed answered. So Chairperson, the next one on 2.2, the minister says that there was correspondence to us and that if you read 2.2, it says that at a time, just give me a second, so I don't get misquoted. Uh, committee, as soon as the committee communicates a desired time for such a meeting. Chair, I just want to find out, has our officials in the committee received that communication? If it did, when? And to my knowledge, I do not recall us as a portfolio committee having received something to that effect because I know that we were continuously asking for Ambassador Machila to appear before the committee. So if it was the onus upon us as the committee to have given them a date and a time, I'd like to know when the correspondence was received so that we can deal with that appropriately. Now, Chair, here's the tick in the table, 2.1 ties up with 2.3. In the minister's explanation around we wanting to call for his immediate uh, recall of the ambassador. She mentions an embarrassing situation that could have existed due to his presence on the Security Council. Chair, you and I are very well aware that there was a sitting of the council that we attended as a portfolio committee, as the oversight committee. Mm. And yet, the ambassador was not there. Mm. So how important is it for us not to suspend him because he needs to be there so we don't get embarrassed, but then it's okay to give him leave to go home when there's still a sitting that's going to happen. So irrespective of whether us as a portfolio committee were coming there to do oversight, he still should have been in New York and whoever granted him the leave should have checked. Is there something as important as the Security Council sitting where we need your presence that we say, no, it's okay. Amba Kaya, Amba Lala, go enjoy Christmas in South Africa. So why do we post you there? So it's okay to use the excuse that he can leave because he applied for it. And then when we want to suspend him, no, we can't suspend him because of our position on the Security Council. I have a problem with that, Chairperson. 
This animal farm mentality must stop. We are all equal, whether we are a resident, whether we are a voter, whether we are a member of parliament, whether we are an ambassador, or whether we are a person begging on the street. No one should be more equal than anybody else. You can't have two separate rules. You can't say you defend him when you want to fire him because of the council. Yet you can give him leave. He doesn't have to go and attend the council sitting. We both know chairperson and those members from the portfolio committee were in oversight. It was a deliberate act on behalf of the ambassador not to be present when we were there. Chair, 2.4, okay, well, 2.5. You see, when you put out a tender, and that's the problem we have with tenders in South Africa, is that we put out the tender for X, and then in between, when we realize there is something else much more lucrative for some people, X becomes Y, and then it's interchangeable. Now, Chairperson, anyone involved in business will tell you that it is far more cheaper to purchase vacant land to put up a structure as opposed to having purchased a dilapidated, burnt down, run down, abandoned building. Now, I want to put this into context here, Professor. You can have it interchangeable, as the minister has said, on the grounds that you purchased a land with a building that was suitable for you to occupy with very little renovations to do. That's acceptable. That's cheap because then the structure is there. But if you purchase a land with a property that's burnt down, run down, abandoned, that you're going to have to demolish and then rebuild, incurs further fruitless waste expenditure. So we must be clear on that. Chair, 2.6. In 2.6, we discussed the issue around the people involved. What amazes me is that this New York project as well as the suspension of the DG has made international news. And I'm surprised that we hear nothing about the ambassador. Nor do we hear about the CFO, or Ms. Bernice Africa Wurben, all three interlinked, intertwined, and always born of contention when this item rears its ugly head. So I'd like to know from the minister if she's aware as to who was the Director General of Durko at the time when this project was initiated. And should not that person also be held accountable if they are still in this department? Now, Chair, we see the name of the CFO again. We see Ms. Bernice Africa involved there. Surely, when the powers that be that took a decision to suspend people over the New York pilot project and the 118 million rand, they should have also done some investigation to find out which other members currently in the department are there that have been tied to this project and that can soil or interfere with any of the investigations regarding this matter and also place them under suspension. Now, Chair, I'm very vociferous around the CFO because the portfolio committee will recall that the CFO, during the first visit of the portfolio committee to Durko,
conducted a coup d'etat or tried to sabotage the working of the portfolio committee. When we raised the issues around the New York pilot project, as well as the charges against him, when he arranged for the staff members who were going to appear before the committee to leave work while the committee was still sitting waiting for them to appear before them. When we reconvened here, you will recall that the members came back and told us that the CFO had told them to leave and not to appear before the committee. And to date, your person, no action has been taken against the CFO. And I'm concerned that the very same CFO now has carte blanche to run the department in the absence of the DG and which he can use his influence to try and get rid of certain incriminating material that can point to the wrongdoings of certain individuals. And Chair, we must be clear because we've seen this firsthand where in his own case, the charges against him were eventually dropped. So I'm just concerned, Chair, that the investigation done to suspend the DG did not have be or have as far a net to have picked up someone like the CFO who has been incriminated, has been tanked linked to all of these things before. And yet he again escapes being suspended. Chair 2.7 and 2.8. You know, I'm really concerned here, Chairperson. Because, you know, we don't realize the amount of money we are talking about. We're talking from a period of 2014 when the Chancellor contract expired and we held negotiations for month to month in the interim. As other members have said, I believe that there was a failing by the executive at that point in time and that there must be, there must be some form of action taken against them for the role that they play or failed to play. Because this is a lot of money. And if you listen here to what the minister had given us in the details, she alluded to in September, 2020, there were three buildings and she makes reference to the UK, which is Third Avenue, and the sublease for two floors. You see, Chair, this is what's concerning to me. If I look at the report and if memory serves me correct, the committee went and viewed 605 Third Avenue, 733 Third Avenue, and 855 Second Avenue. Now, surely, Chair, during the time of our oversight visit, if 845 Third Avenue, which according to the minister, was costing us $37 per square meter as opposed to the current $62 per square meter we are paying, why is it that the committee was not informed of this earlier, or if it was in the process, why is it that during the oversight, none of the members or the officials at the mission, including the infamous general who knew everything that was happening about the Mura pilot project, bring this to the attention of us as a committee so that we could conduct oversight on that building. And chair, if my memory serves me correct, one of the buildings that the committee had viewed, which was ready to occupy, which already housed 
three other embassies of other countries was coming in at around about $30 a square meter. Now, I don't want to get into the semantics of this, but just to say that when we want to compare apples, let's compare apples with apples. $37 compared to $62 might look cheap, but $31 to $37 can also be looked as being cheap. So I would appreciate the chairperson if as a committee that we will get some information about the one regarding the UK deal so that we can also make an informed decision to just see the differences in what we are getting here compared to what the committee had seen. I'm covered by 2.9, 2.10, 2.11. 2.12, and the minister speaks around cost involved for those people as the officials and where they stay and how they commute to town. Now, Chair, there's a reason why the committee also raised this. There is a reallocation allowance that is given to these officials. So let me give you an example. If I am to relocate to, the, to Cape Town, for example, you can give me a reallocation allowance of 10,000 because that's what it is to stay in the city center. But if I choose to go to the southern suburbs where it costs 5,000, I have a benefit of the difference of the 5,000 in my pocket. And the reason behind this chairperson was not about the money that they can save as officials with the reallocation allowance, but due to the fact that when you have Dignities, portfolio committee delegates coming to New York, for example, who are housed in the city center, whilst the officials have to travel two hours out of town if an emergency arrives. Now, Chair, this happened on two occasions. You will recall it together with the other oversight committee members, where we had to wait in the foyer of a hotel room and also, in one occasion, wait out on the streets just so that issues pertaining to meals as well as accommodation were in question. So the reason around trying to get the officials to be staying closer to town was so that they can perform their duties more effectively. Also, Chair, you will realize that the accommodation that I'm talking about was First hand experience by the Oversight Committee of Fruitless and Wasteful Expenditure, where quotation and a billing was done for accommodation, meals, only to find out that the hotel had no restaurant and there were no meals to be provided. Just putting it out there, Chairperson, that we did conduct our work as we thought and so best. Chair, I seriously believe that the DG should be reinstated as he has an interest in ensuring that this matter is cleared and that those who are involved cannot cover up. Because Chairperson, surely the people that should be placed under suspension should have been the then DG, should be the CFO who was involved, should be Bernie Smart who was involved, I mean Bernie's Africa, these are the people now, Chairperson, who still have their tentacles in the department and can very easily taint the investigation that we need. And Chair, I must conclude by saying this much. Yes, the minister has a prerogative to act and suspend whomever she feels needs to be suspended. But I believe in this instance, where the committee took the effort to go out, do the oversight, find out what was going wrong, report to parliament, have a, uh, a report adopted by parliament, surely we should be offered some sort of respect that if these things are going to happen, at least inform us rather than us reading in the press so that we ourselves are not caught with our pants down and having to respond 
in the manner which we have responded. And Chair, as I closed, I just also want to caution my colleague when we make reference to spaza shops. Because Chairperson, I can tell you this much. There are some spaza shops who run more effectively and more efficiently than this department. And comparing the department to the spaza shop is an insult and an embarrassment to those people who are trying their best to come up. So thank you, Chairperson. In that order, honorable members. Thank you, thank, thank you, you Chairperson. Chair I'm honored. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, may I remind honorable members that when we first started our term as members of this committee, we were informed by our predecessors, members of the former committee about what they said was a culture of disrespect and disregard for members of the committee. So many of the things we are hearing and seeing are in line with this culture of disrespect that we have been informed about and warned about. And it is surprising to hear that um, Ambassador Majila had leave not to be present when the committee would be in New York. But the shocking thing obviously is to hear that his colleagues were not aware that he was on leave. It is very surprising that a person that has colleagues can go on leave when there is a delegation coming from South Africa, the delegation that has requested to see him and he does not make himself available or request one of his colleagues to stand in for him. This is a surprise and a shock because in most companies, one can even dare to say in all companies, if the CEO is going to be away, colleagues know. Colleagues know that our CEO will not be available from this time to, the, to, to this time. Now for him to be uh, away and nobody knew where he was, including the DG, I mean, this is very, very embarrassing. This could also reflect the culture of disrespect that has permeated uh, the, 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 this um, department. Now, when the committee uh, arrived in New York, obviously those that received them did not even take them to the hotel that was approved by parliament. Now, I would want to know whether when parliament made an agreement or a decision to approve a particular hotel after having considered all logistics, including issues of security. Who has the right to change what parliament approved without parliament being informed? I'm very curious to know on what basis can an individual or a group of people change a decision because an approval is a decision, an approval of parliament. Under what circumstances is that allowed to be done is something that I want to know about. Um, the issue of um, deposits, normally when you um, book in a hotel, they want a deposit. I would want to know whether that hotel that was approved by parliament, there was no deposit that was paid. And if it, there was any deposit paid, and um, has that money been re retrieved? Have that money been paid back? Or what is happening around that hotel? I would want to know. Now, the department obviously um, is not forthright in saying when they say they did not necessarily talk about uh, buying land. They were planning to buy a building um, and then pull it down, tear it down. As my colleague has said, Chedi has said, it is much more expensive to buy a land that has a building, then you still have to tear down that building, remove the rubble and all that stuff. I, I, I do not understand why the department did not state categorically clear for everybody to understand, including the AG. Now, the Auditor General obviously also thought that it was land and not a building. So 
if they were not planning or deliberately misleading, because we are told that they were not trying to mislead. If they were not misleading, and I would even dare to say deliberately misleading um, parliament and everybody else that they were going to buy land when they were not going to buy land. Um, this thing has to be re-looked into uh, why they were not stating their facts or their plans categorically clear. Now, the, according to the Auditor General, obviously an amount of 118 million was paid for the land according to the records that the Auditor General has, 118 million was paid for the land. Can we be given assurance that that money did not go down the drain? And if that money cannot be accounted for, then all those who are involved have to pay back that money. What happened to that money that was paid for for the land? Has that money been transferred from land to now the building that is preferred or what is the status? I would need um, clarity on this matter. Now, on the reasons to suspend the current DG, who, to my knowledge, does not have any allegations against him? It is too shocking. I mean, we are taken by surprise. Some journalists who knew that were sitting on this committee asked us questions. Were you aware of any serious allegations against him? And one would just say, no. But at the same time, in the department, there are people who for years have had allegations against them. Those people are still in office. Now, the question that comes to me is, is the current suspended DG being made a scapegoat for the mistakes and blunders of other members or other people or what's happening? How can a person whose allegations are not known be suspended? And those with allegations against them that are known, not only for a few months, but for years, are still in office. This matter definitely has to be seriously investigated, not internally, but externally. Obviously, coming to the issue of uh, these matters are being uh, investigated, uh, we want to know who are on the list of those investigators, those who will be investigating whether there are allegations, uh, the allegations of corruption, whether it is allegations or serious uh, facts of cor corruption, those names must be made available to the committee. And I really, really hope that it will not be an internal investigation that will include people that have allegations against them, that will include the CFO. That would be injustice. And I think the, the committee chairperson must, recall, rec uh, must state clearly that they would be totally opposed to any investigation in, done internally that will include people that we know to be, um, have allegations against them. Now, some of us obviously are now tempted to raise these issues in the media to raise this issue, to make them public. And I think because this matter is already in public that maybe we need to do that, all right? We need to know that fairness, there is fairness, there is justice for all in the department, that there are no favoritisms, nobody is above the law. So those who have been implicated must be dealt with, there must be consequences and nobody should be seen to be protected and covered. And lastly, uh, Chairperson, the question of whether um, the ambassador should still appear before the committee, I believe so. I, I believe definitely he still has to answer questions. This matter cannot just be swept under the, cup, the carpet. He still has to answer questions. If you know people have requested to meet with you and you know you are not going to be available, why don't you tell them or delegate somebody with clear information, clear explanation, my senior has Allow, I ask, requested me to stand in for him for these reasons, but just to ignore members of parliament and act as if they have time to waste. When I'm sure they could be, maybe even be tempted to postpone the trip if they knew that the ambassador Machila, who has been over this process, was not going to be there. It's possible they could have postponed the trip, but for them to go to New York and come back with the many questions they came back with. This can easily, the trip can easily also fall under the um, wasted 
expenditure. Unfortunately, it can. Why? Because the main person they wanted to see was not available. So, Chairperson, we need, we have many questions and we need answers. Thank you so much. Honorable, Honorable members in that order. Yes, thanks, Chair. Uh, I'm not sure, Chair, if the committee heard that uh, Honorable Chetty is accusing Honorable Dennis Swat of wrongdoing or of having a hand in what is happening in the department. Uh, but uh, on a lighter note, Chair, I think it was a mistake. Firstly, Chair. Ben Africa, Chair, Ben is Africa. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, the, the minister, uh, Mama Pando, a senior cadre of the movement and a senior public representative of the people or public servant of the people would have been expected to handle what she calls a serious allegations against her conduct better than she did. Uh, she has acquired relevant experience in governance, which I think would have made her to be able to mitigate her own facts here in the committee meeting with regard to the opening remarks of the chair, so that we, all of us in the committee, give the direction and have a collective approach on the matter. Because uh, in my view, chair, uh, that uh, she views uh, what has been uh, said against her or about her uh, must be referred to the speaker so that it be investigated properly, borders into one, what one can say it's arrogance. Those chair, it's, it's more like saying, no, you more right than in a bonanba manitin. I mean, that's not, that's not the appropriate way of us having a, 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 a conducive environment to work uh, between the committee and, and the department. The second issue, Chair, that which I, 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 I made me so uncomfortable was that uh, no spokespersons uh, can answer for themselves. To me, that was not an appropriate answer that I expected from the minister with regard to what is alleged to have been said about her department in the public. Should have been able to, because in my view, spokespeople or spokespersons do not communicate what is on their hearts. They communicate what is happening in the department and what they think is relevant for the cause of their own work. So I, I found it uh, so upset uh, that we even call for a spokesperson to come and address us in this committee. Nevertheless, Chair, the spokesperson came ultimately uh, and, and, and wanted to be brought any piece of work that reveals that he has said anything about the investigation being confirmed with regard to the land issue of uh, of New York, denying chair that uh, uh, he has made comments with regard to the suspension of the DG that has relations with the land issue. In front of me, chair, I've got an article that was published eleven days ago by EWN News. It is. He is quoted to have said, I can confirm that the Director General of the Department of International Relations and Cooperation has been put on precautionary suspension as from Thursday to allow the investigation regarding the land purchase that took place in New York. Uh -huh. Now, the, spokes, the, <laughs> spokes, the spokesperson must therefore come again and say he was quoted out of context. And everyone who believes that the spokesperson made a communication of the suspension of the DG and related it to the New York, New York pilot project. 
let, 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 let me continue, Chair. There is an issue, Chair, about uh, in, the, in, the, in the findings. About, uh, you see, this thing is a, is a chain of, of syndicate. If you check in the findings, Chair, even the bid education and evaluation committees used a criterion that was contrary to the criterion that was publicized in the bid invitation. Now, when we do this thing of consequence management, we mean we are in looking for everyone who is deemed to have done wrong with regard to this particular matter. The minister says, this and this were in part of these committees, this and this were part of these committees, this and this and this uh, are deceased and all that and all that. If I heard clearly that some or many or all of them have been uh, subjected to disciplinary processes, but why is it taking this long? We must remember, Chair, that the sixth administration itself inherited this problem. We started as the committee to indirect with this problem in 2019. Now it's 2021. But the report is saying uh, they are going to be called to the DC or they are called to the DC and all that. In particular, Chair, in these committees, there is a mention of Venice, Africa. The same person who alleged to have gone to New York and had clandestine meetings with service providers there. This calls upon all of us, Chair, to take this matter very, very serious. Was we must go to an extent of saying what was then the final decision or recommendation of the education and evaluation. So that we acquit them of this if they did not bring this person who did not bid. They brought someone else and someone else brought their own person. You have the CFO, the CFO chair. I mean, the CFO. The person who has been out in and out of disease. The person uh, whose report from, from, from the department was that, he has won the DC not on substantive issues, but on procedural issues. Now, having won the DC on, on, on procedural issues, not substantive issues, does not necessarily mean that you are acquitted of having done wrong. So we have called upon the department to look into this matter because the supply chain as unit itself is under the stewardship of the CFO. And the role of the CFO in recommending to the, to the accounting officer a person who was not part of the competitive process. So, Chair, as, 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 as we, we go and do this thing of consequence, ma consequence management, we must, we must bring everyone here. We must bring everyone on board. The same CFO, Chair, is accused of having went with Miss Africa to New York to have these uh, 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 in-camera meetings. Now, Chair, let's go to the final approval, which is uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Jerry Majila, who was then the, uh, the, the Director General, uh, whom after that went to New York to be a permanent representative uh, in the UN mission permanent mission. And, and the narrative that is already driven out there was that Mr. Machila did this and followed it. So that he can duly benefit, he can unduly benefit to what he has done in the department and, uh, and uh, he, is, he is now following it to get uh, the, 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 the low hanging fruits from his own uh, doings. That is the narrative that is driven. Remember, Chair, this matter is now a public discussion. Hence, it is it is even attracting the 
the media, the, uh, media, media, media houses. This is another thing, Chair. Honorable uh, Nkosi and, and Moela speak of the absence of the permanent uh, representative. And they speak correctly on, on, on the leave issue because it was even a surprise for us that this man is not known of having taken a leave by the director general of the of the department. So maybe, maybe without dwelling much on that matter, Chair, if they can they can explain to us how are these uh, things relating to the leaves of absence uh, from our 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 ambassadors and 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 uh, consular generals uh, being processed. I I if I heard correctly, the minister Che she said. Ambassador Majila is now back in the country, the contract having expired and all that. I want to check that in the investigation the department is doing with regard to the matter uh, at hand. Is there any form of investig investigation they are doing to Mr. Jerry Majila? Whether his contract has, end, has ended or not, is there an investigation? Was this us into criminality if found to be true? Is there an investigation that is done against Mr. Jerry Majila? Another question, Chair, that I, that is, that, that I wish to pose is, part of the report that was submitted to the committee was that the matter is now in court as means to recoup and recover what has been lost by the department. How far is that process now? Have we been able to proceed with the trial? And are there prospects of us recovering this 118 million? Lastly, Chair, I think, I think this has dragged too, too long. From 2016, now it's 2021. We, the, I want to propose to the committee that we must give the department a certain time to conclude this matter. Failing which, we are going to recommend to the Auditor General to go report the wrongdoing as per his own finding to state security agencies. Remember, the, the mandate of the Auditor General has been amended such that they are allowed to go and lay a charge into a competent institution of the state against any wrongdoing in terms of their findings in, 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 in these departments. So, Chair, I want to propose that we give them time, uh, that they must finish up on this thing uh, by this particular time, failing which we must go back to the AG and uh, recommend that they must open uh, criminal cases against these people, all of them that appear in the report uh, to uh, alleged to have done wrong. Thank you very much, Chair. Honorable Mbanza. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, first of all, Chairperson, I want to echo the sentiments of other members that uh, your remarks were remarks of the collective members of this committee and not uh, remarks of you as an individual. So we will request that they then not be individualized or personalized to you, Chair, but to be attributed uh, to the portfolio committee uh, as a whole. We also uh, note the minister's responses uh, on this matter. And I think uh, <clears throat> we, we have the right also to then engage as other honorable members before me have done. Chair, I just want to say 
every time this matter is being dealt, it brings emotions. Uh, you could uh, hear how Honorable Rumsani and uh, Chetty and Ngola, who were part of the delegation, uh, are raising this issue. Uh, Chair, many things there happened, all sorts of things that members have uh, mentioned. Uh, where we ended being stranded in a foreign country at night. We slept in the reception area of a hotel, still waiting for our accommodation to be arranged. You know, Chair, like, like street adults, or oh, Amapara, it's happened to Amapara in New York, America. Honorable members of parliament treated in that way. And, and, I, and I still chair, have not uh, recovered from that kind of treatment uh, by our officials in the department. But chair, I, I want us to separate uh, things here. You know, Chair, the, 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 the conduct of the, the ambassador there, uh, we will use the language that we know uh, that are also used when we're dealing with matters of, this, of, mis, of misconduct. Really, really was tantamount to abscoshing, abscoshing. The ambassador absconded, he went a wall. And, and, and that is a serious misconduct, particularly of a person uh, of the stature of an ambassador in the position that uh, he was occupying. He also uh, directed in performing his duties which is also a serious misconduct. That warrant consequence management. And I think our recommendation in relation to that aspect uh, is uh, informed by these uh, two issues that I'm, I'm, I'm raising. Because it is clear, Chair, we were there and members of the portfolio committee were, 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 were informed as to what transpired there. No one knew about the whereabouts uh, of the ambassador. The accounting officer, which is the DG, and even the second in charge there, as you members have also raised, didn't know uh, the whereabouts of the ambassador. And worse, he did not uh, appoint it or delegate someone to act. Uh, in his in his absence. Now we then st were still insisting, Chairperson, on the basis of that, that this warrant consequence management, and this is beside the issue of irregular expenditure as raised by the AG. That's a separate issue, and the, that alone also a warrant consequence management as far as the ambassador uh, is concerned and who was the DG by the time all these things uh, take place. One question, Chair, that uh, we would really like the minister to, uh, to enlighten this uh, portfolio committee about. Because there's been now, I think uh, he ha she has to, you know, clarify this issue to us so that when we go to the public domain as it is the matter in the public domain now, we will go there with a clear mind having heard from her, is the DG suspended for the 118 million New York pilot project irregular expenditure or not? We really want that one to be clarified, Chair. 
uh, because it will then assist us uh, as to how we then manage this thing uh, in the battle of ideas uh, out there. And who was the, the DG at the time? We don't want to ask you, we want to hear from the minister. And then who awarded the tender? Chair, I think in one of the report, I think this report, it, it states exactly who are the people who were involved. But, but it will be proper for record purposes today to hear from the minister actually responding to this, uh, this question, because what we have seen, in fact, the, 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 the former, no, 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 the CFO was the chair of the Bid Adjudication Committee. And then the then DG is the one who signed off the reports or the recommendations of the Bid Adjudication chaired by the CFO. Now, it's then surprising that uh, we see about the suspension, I accept if it's not related to, to this issue. Suspension of someone put in a precautionary uh, suspension of someone who was not involved and whose name is not even appearing uh, in all those people who were participating, participating in these issues that the AG has raised. So, so Chair, really that one of consequence management, because what is clear is that the ambassador went on an unauthorized leave. If the DG doesn't know about the leave and did not approve the leave, so who else? Uh, whoever authorized that leave was doing an unauthorized thing. Uh, if that is the protocol in terms of the leave uh, of absence approval. Chair, another thing that I will emphasize I won't dwell on the other issues that uh, the members are saying. But Chair, what I also want to raise is that ours as a committee is not to interfere. You have uh, put that matter very clear in your opening remarks, interfere with the powers and responsibilities of the minister. But as a committee, we have an oversight role and the responsibility to call or to hold executive and the department to account, and, the, and the, we will not uh, be fearful to execute that responsibility. Particularly, Chair, when issues that uh, are being dealt with and they are even in the public domain and becoming even international uh, matter are actually bordering as we have correctly said, bordering to undermining and to, and, and to taint the image, dignity, and the integrity of committee and parliament. So we've got a responsibility, Chair, uh, to raise issues there and, uh, and, 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 and play our oversight. So we won't, we, won't, we, won't, we won't keep quiet, Chair, unfortunately. Uh, we were not uh, uh, deployed, uh, Chair, to, to be rubber stamps. If uh, there the, is the impression that maybe that was happening in the previous administration, the portfolio committee, uh, I think, Chair, uh, that is unfortunate because uh, we will play our robust oversight over the executive and the department. But Chair, I think this meeting must also be dealt with in the spirit, in the spirit, Chair, that uh, we are not uh, actually uh, accusing one another or it, uh, it's, it's a blame game, but it's that each component is playing its role and uh, we must engage and uh, engage frank, frankly and honestly with each other and also uh, engage chair 
as uh, respected uh, as respected uh, respectable uh, honorables, uh, whether we are members of community, whether we are executive, whether officials in the department, and uh, I think we must take in the way with the aim of correcting the wrong and addressing issues uh, that are of public interest and of which we all have the responsibilities and and the and the and the and the and the, and the role to account uh, to the South African uh, society and not hide issues uh, to them. Thanks very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Weep, Honorable Swar. Uh, good afternoon, Honorable Chair. Uh, good afternoon to the Minister and to her team. And good afternoon, Honorable Members. Chair, you know, ever since we got to this committee, we have been singing New York, which ultimately led to this committee going on the oversight visit to New York. Came back with a report, came back with very horrible, scary, unacceptable pictures of a building which had Zinyoga Nyoga lines running through it. And some of us by then were in recess and you had to go and work. Now we are sitting here today, Chair. It's as if we don't know what we are doing as the committee. Because one, there is a clear article which Honorable Ngola has highlighted where the spokesperson clearly is being mentioned and quoted in open quotes and close quotes on him responding to the media that the suspension is in relation to New York. Two in the chair, the numbers of times that you have engaged the media, eh, we are wrong because it means it's not around New York. So I want to be direct before I make my inputs and follow in the honorable eh, Whip Mpanza's words to say, can we be told today in this meeting whether yes or no, the DG has been suspended for the 118 million New York project or not? So that we can know as the committee, but see our work is still too much. It means that we must yet again take two steps back and ask ourselves whether the report that was submitted to the speaker's office and ultimately tabled in the house has not had any effects up to today. You know, Chair, when we came here and were given a report on New York, which ultimately led to this committee sitting in PC meetings with the department going through what transpired in the actual tender awarding of New York, which ultimately led to the AG's findings in which in one meeting, the CFO, who is being mentioned here today, said he will take the AG to court. He is disputing the AG's report. And our response was, we hope it will be from his own pocket and not from government coffers when he takes the AG to court. Because any person 
who is the lame man who does not even understand what happens during the awarding of a tender, will understand the AG's report very loud and clear that Simeka versus the other company versus the other company, there was just a wrongdoing in the joint venture itself. So before we even get to the actual money that was paid up front, we must get to the AG's findings on the wrong awarding of this tender. Now, Chair, Parliament served as a catalyst in a accountability chain between itself, the executive and voters. The three basic roles of Parliament is to represent people who are the electorate, make laws and oversee government through hearings, inquiries and oversight visits. The latter is quite key in the wake of the recent developments at Turku, in which the minister decided to suspend a DG on the basis of a matter, which as earlier indicated by the committee had, has already made recommendations on, because the committee has made recommendations on this issue. In fact, nothing can be more embarrassing to the committee than to be overlooked by the executive authority who must be accountable to it in line with section 552A of the constitution. It is therefore not clear why the minister chose to decide to put the DG on precautionary suspension for investigation purposes. This is a serious area by the executive authority. It continues to add to those acts and decisions that undermine parliament and its oversight work. By suspending the DG over a matter which the PC has dealt with, with the minister effectively undermining the oversight role and supremacy of parliament and fails to uphold the constitution of the land by sidestepping the portfolio committee's findings and recommendations. If South Africa was to build a capable state sufficiently equipped with men and women who display ultimate respect for the rule of law, it will be imperative for the president to review his delegations of authority for disciplining of DGs by ministers without adequate information being provided. I do not think the president would have authorized the minister if he had all the facts from the committee's oversight report, Chair. Chair, I'm saying this because if for true, for real, the DG has been suspended for New York, then it means that all our work equals zero in this instance because none of our recommendations would have been taken seriously. The Honorable Minister has made frequent references to the SMS Handbook and Public Service Act in the responses to the committee's correspondences. I would like to emphasize that the committee does not intend to interfere with your executive power at all, Minister. I had to go to the very chapter seven you have made reference to and would like to draw your to your attention, one of the provisions of the chapter under purpose and scope. It says the purpose of disciplinary code and procedure for SMS members is to prevent arbitrary or discriminatory actions by supervisors towards SMS members. What surprises me is that honorable minister, despite the fact that in this New York saga, one or both accounting officers should be taken to task about the reported anomalies in the procurement process. However, it is surprising that the minister decided to investigate the matter further 
resulting in placing of the current DG on suspension over an incident that spans almost five years old, in which two DGs were in office. Can the minister comment on this so that at least maybe for us members in this committee to have clarity that the report that the members who actually went on the oversight vice v what we found as a matter that we carried over from the fifth parliament to this sixth parliament which had bearings on an ag's finding report that we have clarity today when we leave here and also equally chair it means that we are yet still to call Durko again so that this matter can find finality because there is something seriously wrong here, Chair. And it is very heartbreaking that the minister says that if we want to take her to task, we must take her to task and bring her before parliament so that she responds if we think that she has done anything wrong. I don't know, Chair, because it seems like now we are the comedy of doom. Anything we touch sparks differences which look as if us as the committee um, are not really clear in our heads what we mean by all this findings and recommendations that we make. But it will be very painful if it means that the work that we have done so far is not respected and regarded anyway when it comes to these matters. Back to the Public Service Act, it is indisputable that ministers are responsible for the effectiveness and efficiency of their departments. But this must be achieved with close collaboration with heads of departments. Why would a minister opt to resort to a precautionary suspension on a matter which we regard as straightforward without considering that the department may experience management disruptions if a DG is not on duty for some time? Can Turco survive? when it is clear that it does not have adequate management leadership skills and competencies. Because Chair, we have over months been getting reports that the New York matter, just like Honorable Tolan Nola has put here, that it is in court. And we keep on hearing that the matter is still in court. I remember one time officials of this department wanted to play law English with us and were telling us the matter is sub judicare, it's what, it's what. Up until we told them that irrespective of that, there's an ages finding. Now, Chair, nobody does not know that New York does not have land. Therefore, we were told before of an old church and even worse, that even money for removing of rubble was paid in these irregular payments where there are no before and after pictures. You just read Uguti, the, the, the building was demolished and um, there was money paid for the removal of rubble. So now, Chair, you were very, very clear in your opening remarks that as a committee, where we stand now, Chair, 
vice view what has happened over the past few days. Mina, as a committee member, I'm lost because maybe I will be brought back in line because seemingly we are like school kids in this committee now. We are not doing oversight work. We are being told to stand up and sit down and uh, told that if we feel it's painful and it hurts, we must go and report where we feel it's the highest. So what I'm saying Chair, is that me today, all they need to tell us through the minister and her team that Tina, yeah, whether the DG was suspended for the New York case or not. So that if he was not suspended for New York, we must know committee that our work is still too much and that the New York saga goes on and we must go back to the PC and go and read talk proper English because the English we've been speaking is diluted. I you can do it to as this committee a right man. If he has been suspended for New York, then there's a lot of abnormalities because then it means that a person who was not here when the matter took place has been on precautionary suspension and maybe we will be highlighted once the investigation is done, Uguti, where he fits in, in a matter that was already flagged by the AG on money that was already gone. Unless there are follow-up payments that were made that we don't know when we look at the matter that is at hand. But if it is New York, then it is something else because the spokesperson is denying his own words yet, where he was quoted by the media. And for that matter, the suspension letter of the DG has been flying, it was flying all over Facebook, media, everywhere. And that's where everybody read about it. The next thing we're watching Turco on TV, which is neither here nor there, now that we're at this stage. But at this stage, if we can be given clarity, Chair. But also, Chair, I think it is wrong for a minister who we are working with as the committee to say to us uh, she can come and answer. And also that the spokesperson, Begaz Krumel, he must answer for himself. So uh, people in this department are separating each other from each other but which is not new from this department because even when they come before us, this department, they tell you this and they tell you that. And then now that today, even people who were sitting on the BAC and BC by then have died, uh, three or two, may their souls rest in peace. Can those that are alive and kicking answer to what transpired by also making sure Uguti um, there's consequence management, not only on one person, because there are numerous people being counted here. But in J, hi, we must respect each other um, honorable members because at the end of the day, we are all MPs with our respective roles. But not going to allow it, meaning honorable members, that we are going to be rubber stamps and window pressers. No. And we are not going to become afraid and fear when we are supposed to speak. Because we've got South African citizens to represent and to answer to. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Swartz. Uh, I'm going to allow uh, the minister to respond. Uh, 
Honorable Velem Fiber, lower that hand to you. I'm not going to speak now. Honorable Minister. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, I wish to uh, thank the honorable members uh, for their comments and questions. And I'd like to begin by assuring the committee that we do take the committee's report uh, seriously and that indeed we are acting. It is uh, accurate, I think, for the committee to say we've been slow, but I hope in the next uh, a few weeks the committee will see that indeed we are acting, and as Honorable Muela has indicated, it is important that at the right time we do come to the committee to provide an update on the consequence management processes that he indicated I would uh, come back to the committee on. So I do uh, confirm that that remains uh, the position. I then, Chairperson, would with respect ask that given that consequence management matters rest under uh, specific legislation and that all uh, officials have rights that all of us must uphold, I would not be able to go into any uh, detail with respect to the matter of the Director General uh, nor other officials uh, who are mentioned uh, in the report we provided to you However, I do undertake that at the time uh, when legally I believe it is possible to come to the committee and actually provide uh, more information on these matters, I commit that I will do so. On the uh, matter of the former DG, I have presented the response that I have received from uh, uh, the department with respect to, to the DG, uh, rather with respect to the former uh, DG. Um, on the matter of recall, uh, we were not able to find grounds that are within uh, the uh, details of the contract for contract appointees, because at the time, the appointee was not um, as a, an official of the department, uh, but was a contract appointee as ambassador, as I understand it. And uh, the grounds for recall are stated yeah. quite clearly, both in the contract and in uh, the uh, guidelines that guide uh, the department. But as indicated in the report to you, Chairperson, and to the committee, it certainly is within the bounds of the committee's own uh, rules that uh, the former DG could be uh, uh, invited to uh, address uh, the committee. With respect to uh, the comments of Honorable uh, Msani, I uh, wish to indicate, as I said, that I cannot go into uh, reasons or detail with respect to um, the Director General's precautionary suspension, but I would come back at the appropriate time under legal advice to um, indicate all uh, the outcomes and processes, which I have attempted to follow assiduously uh, in terms of the Public Service Act, including consulting uh, the Department of Public Service and Administration. Indeed, Honorable Sani is right. Uh, it is the intention that the processes should not go on forever, uh, and particularly given that uh, it would affect more than one uh, official uh, in the department, it would be important that we meet the timeframes that are specified in the appropriate regulations, and I am paying attention uh, very carefully to those time frames. Um, then, uh, to indicate again to the Honorable Msani, 
uh, with respect to the concern about the acting DG and other senior managers. Uh, we do meet on a regular basis. We do monitor um, the commitments and goals that we have set, and uh, we'll continue to do so. And I will support Ambassador Lossi uh, and the various uh, DDGs as uh, we seek to ensure that we do meet uh, the targets uh, that we have set before the committee. I will, as uh, Honorable Msani has asked, and as I've said, come back with respect to what is being done to the consequence management of the other named uh, officials, and I, I am sure the committee action is underway. Um, the matter of uh, the former DG again was raised by Honorable Lusani, and my response is as I've uh, tabled it. Uh, let me uh, apologize to the committee. There was an initial report we sent uh, to the speaker in response to the committee's report, and we realized that the information within it, as has been pointed out uh, by Honorable Chetty, was insufficient, and therefore an amended uh, report was uh, uh, developed and has been uh, uh, sent through as I, I requested uh, uh, to the portfolio committee. Uh, with respect to Honorable Mwela's uh, uh, remarks, I note the support by the committee and, and uh, Honorable Panza confirmed this as well, uh, that these are remarks that all the committee supports. Um, and uh, Chairperson, let me assure you, I was not by any means seeking to be arrogant. I was concerned at the notion that I disrespected the portfolio committee and parliament um, and that I had not shown integrity in my conduct. Um, this is what is certainly of concern to me, but I appreciate that all the committee shares uh, the remarks as expressed uh, by the chairperson and I certainly wish to humbly indicate uh, that I don't in any way disrespect the chairperson. I've indicated this publicly and I've felt uh, that she really is supporting us and the work she does is very important as is the work by the, of the committee. So uh, there was no intention to disrespect. Um, uh, Honorable Muela, I, I do uh, accept that there's been a failing in terms of coming back to the committee uh, and action taken has uh, been slow, but as I've indicated, uh, we will uh, uh, revert uh, as uh, matters develop. But I think uh, it's important for me to say, I don't think we'd be able to, for example, come and say, we have charged Naledi Pando. These are the charges. Because Naledi Pando charged would have rights and these uh, uh, hopefully would have to be uh, upheld as we must do uh, with officials. But uh, I will uh, undertake Honorable Mwela uh, that there won't be a silence on our part. <clears throat> I note uh, that uh, we should uh, in the, indeed uh, delegate deputy ministers. I have attempted to always do so when they're available. Uh, unfortunately, that date, uh, uh, just we, we had real difficulty, but uh, certainly uh, Honorable Mwela is right. Uh, we shouldn't create any impression of uh, disrespecting uh, the plans of the portfolio committee. The matter of leave, I believe that leave of ambassadors uh, is processed through the programs. Um, so I would uh, assume, although in, in this case, I don't have a definitive uh, uh, knowledge of it because I have not studied the forms that were filled out, but I would assume it would be the deputy director general who would have finally approved the leave, which would have come through the appropriate desk. Um, and so uh, that, that is uh, where I, I, I can leave it at this time. With respect to the Honorable uh, Nkosi, indeed, uh, Honorable Nkosi, you are right. Probably we should have intervened. One of two penalty drops. Relief. 
I beg your pardon? Can I continue, Chair? The mics, because you are disturbing the speaker on the platform, please. Mute your mics, honorable people. Continue, Minister. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, as Honorable Nkosi has said, perhaps we should have made a statement. Uh, but again, um, it is my avoiding uh, beginning to delve into the content of a matter that is unfolding uh, and which is governed by a very clear prescript. I have avoided making uh, the processes relevant to the DG and other officials public uh, processes in order not to uh, have uh, an incorrect narrative or to place uh, the department or ministry in a position where indeed we could uh, be taken up uh, uh, by uh, the affected officials in a challenge with respect to their rights. Um, I assure uh, Honorable Nkosi that as far as I have uh, been informed by the department, and I checked with uh, the acting DDG for corporate services, the former ambassador uh, um, and permanent rep uh, at the UN is now uh, back in South Africa. But he's not at HQ. He's not in the department. Um, the internal risk meetings, this is a matter I've expressed concern about. And in fact, I've now asked that uh, I be informed uh, when our officials, senior officials don't attend meetings as they should, so that I might take action. Because I do believe it's important uh, that they do attend these meetings and assist us in addressing uh, the very serious risk uh, 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 inadequacies that confront uh, my department. So this is something I have uh, directed uh, the DDGs and uh, particularly the DG to make sure uh, we, we observe. Um, with respect to uh, Honorable Chetty, um, I could not find anywhere that uh, when action is taken by the executive um, against uh, a senior uh, management service member, a DG, that the minister would immediately uh, uh, proceed to inform uh, of the committee. Um, but I, I will be guided uh, uh, by uh, the wishes of the committee on this. And again, it's a matter that I think uh, should be taken up further so that uh, ministers are properly uh, guided on this and that it doesn't in any way impact on any uh, uh, disciplinary measures that might be underway. Um, on the matter of the ambassador, uh, uh, I have, I believe, uh, Mr. Chetty, I believe I've, I've responded with respect to that. Uh, on the matter of the cheaper uh, rental, Hello? Uh, that uh, you are aware of, and I'm not uh, involved in, in the procurement. Honorable Alvin, can you please mute your mic? Please mute your mic. I will continue. Uh, I'm, I'm not aware of uh, the procurement process uh, that ensued. And in fact, uh, as far as I understand, uh, the way the rules relating to oversight are concerned by ministers, I wouldn't uh, be asking uh, uh, committees uh, that uh, oversee procurement, uh, which uh, building they're looking at and they should go to this one. It's not uh, a part of the, the, the remit or, or the information that would immediately uh, be directed to me. It would be the accounting officer uh, that would be a, a directly consulted uh, with respect to this. Um, then the matter of, am I aware who was DEG at the time of the debacle? Uh, yes, I, I, I am aware. Um, I'm also aware that the matter has gone well beyond 
uh, the period uh, mentioned, uh, and I can only say yes, I am aware who was uh, who was DG. Um, as to why the committee was not informed of intention to lease another building, uh, I'm, I'm unable to, to respond fully to this because uh, I'm not familiar with whether the uh, department would come to, to the committee on, on such a matter and say, we've now looked at a number of premises. I don't know if it's part of the uh, process, um, but uh, I, in my report, in response to the committee's uh, uh, questions, have provided a response on the actions now taken uh, by the department. A chairperson, I wish to ensure Reverend Mishwe that I don't in any means disrespect the committee. And uh, I assure uh, Reverend Mishwe that from the information I've been provided with, uh, Mr. Machila was indeed on leave, uh, but uh, I don't intend by any means to disrespect the committee. On the matter of the hotel and who changed it, I really, I, I don't know. I, I, I am unable uh, to respond, nor can I respond in the matter of a deposit and whether it was uh, 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 returned. As to whether the purchase of land which has a building that might be demolished or on land that is vacant, I, again, I'm reporting on what was reported to me by the department. As to which is cheaper, I unfortunately uh, would not be able uh, uh, to make uh, uh, such a judgment. The 118 uh, a million uh, uh, was indeed approved uh, and paid out. Um, there is nothing to uh, show for it. Hence the case in court that I referred to and the judgment, as I indicated, uh, is uh, awaited. Uh, there's no intention to make the DG a, a scapegoat and I hope that uh, the members will be able to see the proof of this once the whole process uh, has been uh, concluded. And there's no intention on my part, nor do I know of any person that I would protect or any uh, covering uh, that I would do, uh, Honorable Reverend. To the Honorable uh, uh, Ngrola, uh, it might be that uh, I, my view appeared to border on, on arrogance. That was not at all my intention, but as I said, my conduct as indicated in the remarks of the committee was referred to in a fairly negative light. And I think any human being uh, would be concerned at being uh, 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 described in the manner uh, that the remarks uh, that all the committee members have indicated their support uh, uh, were, were stated. Uh, I asked the spokesperson to answer because I wanted to clear up. I have done so by way of a letter to the chairperson that at no instance, none, did I ever say that the precautionary suspension was related to the report of the portfolio committee? And the chair mentioned uh, the spokesperson and uh, he then uh, uh, clarified. The reason I uh, avoided uh, a media uh, uh, interview and there was spate uh, of, of demands for such and claims and allegations I avoided this because we want the process of this action to be managed in a very, very professional and legal manner. Um, on uh, Mr. Machila, I'm not aware of an investigation into Mr. Machila. Uh, I'm not aware of that. I reported on the court process, uh, Honorable Mrola. Um, Honorable Panza, again, I note, as you have uh, asserted, uh, the committee shares the chair's uh, 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 views, their committee views. 
Um, and uh, I've indicated that I cannot refer to the specific matters of the uh, precautionary suspension uh, and DC of uh, uh, the Director General. Um, then uh, I do subscribe to being held to account by the committee, hence my presence uh, before the committee and my attempts to respond to the committee uh, today. Uh, I assure Honorable Swartz that I appreciate the work of the committee and I regret that I am creating an impression uh, that I seem to think I, the committee doesn't know what it's doing. The reason we've taken the report of the portfolio committee seriously and report on it, on each of the recommendations, I hope does give a, a signal that we do take the work, very important work that the portfolio committee does very seriously. I have uh, indicated uh, uh, why I cannot at this time associate the suspension of any particular matter in uh, an open meeting, uh, uh, such as the one we're in at the moment. Um, we do have uh, uh, managers uh, who are competent in the department, and I will work closely with them, a uh, chairperson, to ensure uh, that we do not fail as far as is humanly and uh, professionally possible uh, in our uh, duties. Honorable chairperson, I thank you uh, uh, for, for this opportunity. And I hope that uh, I have uh, answered the questions posed uh, by the honorable members. Uh, chairperson, I'm wondering if the chairperson could indicate uh, how long the meeting will continue as uh, there's another committee meeting and I need to alert them if I'm not going to attend. Thank you, honorable chairperson. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Honourable Minister, uh, for your for your responses. Uh, we are hoping to conclude uh, the meeting by half past one. Um, uh, by that time, the meeting uh, surely would be uh, concluded. Uh, Honorable members, uh, the minister has responded on what you have raised. Uh, a few issues which I want to raise to the minister is that on the, on the claims that uh, uh, Mr. Machila was on leave in South Africa, uh, for sure the department should have uh, the records. Can we get the boarding passes? Uh, of um, Ambassador Machila uh, because we are certain that Ambassador Machila was not in South Africa during our visit there in New York uh, because no one knew, even the person that was authorized or responsible to authorize uh, her leave uh, was not uh, aware of uh, such a, a leave of absence, so can we get the correspondence right. on this particular travel, uh, uh, which was authorized for sure, the boarding passes and other information uh, will be there so that we get to the bottom of this specific matter, which borders on undermining a parliament and the portfolio committee. Now, a straight question for me, a Minister, would be, is the current DG on precautionary leave because of 118 million um, irregular expenditure on the New York project? I think that question is straightforward. It needs a clarity. And as a portfolio committee, we need to be clarified. If the matter on New York and 118 is in court, 
now and we are saying it is subject k. Is it not parallelism that uh, the minister decides to put certain individuals on the precautionary leave? And in this instance, uh, the DG uh, currently of, of the department. The PFMA defines expenditure and um, in many uh, other aspects uh, to what we are uh, talking about now, other than unauthorized, uh, which is incurred in contravention of, uh, of the PFMA in accordance with requirements of any application of the legislation. Now, the, there's something called the, by people of finance when they are shortening it, it is called UIF. We would think that it's the UIF of labor, but it's a UIF that stands for three unwanted uh, expenditures, which is unauthorized, irregular expenditure, fruitless and wasteful expenditure. That's what the UIF means. Now, the New York is about the irregular expenditure and not the other two types of expenditures. And this, uh, it is because of non-compliance. Even if there was a land, the expenditure would still be irregular on the New York project. Because it, it, before, I'm not sure if the minister is aware that there were discrepancies which were cited on the part of this project, which were identified as irregular before this matter was approved by the former DG. But they continued to approve and appoint uh, the, the, the beta, even though these were stipulated uh, by, by the, not only by the AG, even Treasury um, stipulated this and they were put categorically that these are irregularities, these are discrepancies, these are a number of uh, things that would have been considered uh, on the issue of a New York project before the issue itself uh, was, was, was approved by both uh, the, the, the bids committee and the, the bids committee, adjudication committee, and the DG at the time. And all of us here, we agree that the DG at the time was Mr. Matsila or Ambassador Matsila. But the people uh, who are supposed to be brought to book are sitting somewhere uh, very comfortable, whilst this other one is 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 here. Yeah. So the the, the irregularities, uh, Minister, uh, as stipulated and identified by both the AG and the Chief Procurement Officer. Uh, the, the tax clearance certificate submitted with the bid was not in the name of the company, which was ultimately awarded the contract. The latest annual finance certificate statements submitted by the winning bidder were not audited as required by the responsive criteria in the tender document. The company who the bidder was awarded to is not the same company which submitted the bidding document. The company that won the tender failed to disclose that they are in joint venture with other bidding on the standard bid document. The evaluation criteria on functionality by DERCO in the bid document only provided for the weight 
but not values. Despite this, values were used during evaluation process. The square meters for the residential accommodation as per the terms of reference do not agree to the square meters approved by the accounting officer, which is Jeremy Matsila in this instance. The initial contract was for 20 square meters, but the former DG signed a document for 40 square meters. All these uh, irregularities were identified by both the AG and Chief Procurement Officer uh, at, 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 at Treasure. So now the question would be, all this being attributed to relevant persons by the AG, as put categorically, how does the element of this current DG, which is suspended on 118 million features in the bigger scheme of things? I think the portfolio committee needs to be clarified on this so that when we emerge out of this meeting, we are able to articulate as briefed by the minister on this particular matter, because this matter has become an international scandal. That's why the committee is seized with running around and respond to the media inquiries in defense of the integrity of parliament. I see you honorable members that you, you, you are raising your hands. Uh, I see honorable Ngola, can we be quick so that we finish our meeting? Uh, short uh, follow-up questions, not long questions. I see Cheti, I see Mbanza, I see Msane. Can you please in that order quickly, guys? Thanks, Chair. One issue from me, the spokesperson came here very bold, saying we must produce evidential material that points him saying the suspension of the DG is, is in relation with the, with the uh, New York pilot project. We have, say, we have thus produced that. Uh, can he come and say he confirms or deny what is said to have been uh, said by him on media? with regard to the matter that we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are discussing now. Thank you. In that order, Honorable Members. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I'll try and be brief, which is very difficult. Firstly, I think, Chair, what we should be doing is that we should be calling the minister to a meeting with the committee for an in-committee meeting. So it's just the members as well as the minister, so we can get to the bottom of all of this. So she can now tell us certain things that she can't say in this meeting, which is a public open meeting. The reason I'm saying this, Chef person is that, like the minister by her own admission said, there are a lot of things she's unaware of. The report she's given to us is from the report that she has received from the department. Simple things about the investor given leave, yet there is a security council meeting. The issue around how many square meters. And we know, the minister is very busy. This is why there's a portfolio committee. We go out, we dig up the dirt. We look at these things. We work out the costs and we can produce us as a portfolio committee to play that oversight. We, we play the oversight on behalf of the South African public. And this is the reason why we ask the questions that we've asked. We can tell her that there were three other buildings which are cheaper, all of this. So I think Chairperson that the minister should be meeting with the portfolio committee members for an in-committee meeting which stays confidential and then we can all flesh this out, ask the questions we need, get the answers we need, not having this uh, situation where we are told that because it's a public open meeting there's certain information that cannot be divulged. Thank you, ma'am. Next. Thank you, Chair. I think, Chair, uh, uh, Honorable Chetty, it's also supporting what Honorable Mola uh, raised earlier on as a way forward to deal with this matter. But Chair, I think there is one matter that we must also think about. And if I think even the minister, I think for the minister in particular in the department, uh, the management of uh, issues that are sensitive, like the one issue that we dealt with of the pre uh, precautionary suspension of the teaching. Uh, why I'm raising that, Chairperson, because 
that, that, that matter was not, as we are sitting now like this, it is an indication that the matter was not uh, managed properly and uh, in a very uh, strategic way. And, and therefore we need to hear, or maybe the committee must think about that, how are we going to be managing issues of this nature uh, going forward? So as to repeat, you know, the halabalu that has happened and everyone was running around, even yourself, Chairperson, uh, had to respond to media issues when you are not aware of issues uh, that have been uh, uh, brought to the media. So I think we must really, really uh, find a way, and, but in particular, because the matter started from the department and the minister's office, uh, they must find a way of managing things uh, which are sensitive like these ones uh, in a better way so that we don't have a repeat of what has happened. Uh, Chairperson, thanks very much. Thank you very much, Whip, in that order. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, two things. Firstly, is that if, if there's an investigation, we ask the question. If there's an investigation in the department, what are the terms of reference? Is it done internally on the New York issue, by the way? If it, is it done internally or externally? What is the duration? Are those implicated or allegedly implicated placed on precautionary suspension or not. The second thing is, Chair, um, I think let's leave this one. Fine, thanks. In that order? Honorable Chaiba. Thank you, Chairperson. I was wondering if you forgot about my hand in the beginning. Chairperson, yes, what, what I don't hear, I, I hear about all these things, and the accounting officer, which um, I obviously you can only Google to see in any case who was the DG at the time. Um, so the minister don't have to say to us, we already know that those of us who can read and re do research. But another thing that bothers me is that the Ambassador Mashlangu, Tata Mashlangu was also NCOP um, chair at some stage. He was the ambassador there since 2015. And surely I don't read anywhere that anyone asked Tata Mashlangu anything. And as well as I told you previously as well, the previous honorable minister. And, and surely these two are the political heads of that time. I, I just don't understand. We, we are going on all the administrative parts, but the political heads of those times, the ambassador of that time, the minister of that time, I don't hear anything um, coming from it that they should take accountability. You know, sorry, we're speaking about consequent management. Doesn't that then also account for the politicians? Because surely I can't understand that the ambassador of South Africa in the US don't have any um, information on what's going on. My gosh, he's the ambassador. He's the person that talks to the DG and tells him what he wants and if he don't want it and what the cost is. So Chairperson, I'd really like to see to it um, that these politicians that have now got other jobs in other countries or ministers, um, they have to, we've got to. There's no reason why uh, ex ambassador. And Martin, this is supposed to be a follow up question. You are too long. That, that, that was part of time. my follow up, Chair. You made why your the politicians point. Aren't also being you taken made your point, Honorable Chetty. I've already had my turn, Chair. Thank you. you. Lower your hand, please, Honorable Swartz. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Chair, my minister said Chair, that uh, um, I want to say that what I had said earlier that my follow-up question is still, Chair, that you have assisted us in putting clarity so that we know when we live here 
Ugutu Tichi Usaspendelwe, a hundred and eighteen million years in New York or not. And I think, Chair, you have further clarified what I was saying that it causes confusion on us because we are very clear what the AG's report says and which companies were involved. And also, the investigation that is taking place now, Chair, on a matter of five years. If what Honorable Nkosi is asking and the answer is going to be external, it means that, Chair, we are wasting money again to investigate on a matter that has got facts on the table, which is where we are having a problem that if it is not New York, we must be told so that we know that it is an external or internal investigation, but internally in this department, Chair will make us run away very far. So far, I'm all stars, I can't go to my speech, I'm a Isostola, maybe speech, I'm a Elna Lulu Lendaba, if there's internal investigation at Terco, based on what we have seen at Terco ever since arriving here as the committee. So, if there's an external investigation on New York chair, then surely there should be no cat and mouse. We should be told that there are new things that are being investigated. And I equally concur what Honorable Nkosi to say, we must be given the time frames on how long it's going to take. Uh, because a person who's on precautionary suspension in the form of the DG, as the norm is, um, it might be a miracle if he's on precautionary without pay. But the norm in government is that whether it's precautionary or suspension, it's on pay for whichever yes. I hope we are not going to see the case in this matter. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Members. Minister. Uh, again, uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, with respect um, to the request or directive on uh, boarding passes, I will refer this to the department. Um, I don't know whether they're able to produce them, but I'll refer it to, to the department. And as I said, Chairperson, I am unable to go into detail with respect to the precautionary suspension of the DG and reasons or charges uh, uh, thereof. Uh, the matter is indeed uh, 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 in court, as, as you indicate. I believe I have followed the required uh, prescripts. Uh, and to perhaps answer Honorable Swartz, it, it is precautionary suspension with pay, uh, as I recall uh, the letter to, to the DG. Um, the Honorable Nkola, uh, on the spokesperson, well, I, I'm not quite sure uh, uh, whether I would be able to respond. That is your prerogative, uh, Chairperson. Um, and then I'm not aware, as I said, uh, in response to the Honorable Chetty about the procurement process for leasing a building uh, in, in New York. So I wouldn't know that there were a number of buildings and a number were cheaper because I, as minister, do not become involved uh, in, in, in such uh, uh, processes. Um, I, I note, uh, Chair, the Honorable Mpanza's view that I didn't handle the matter properly. As I indicated, uh, I have followed the prescripts uh, of the Public Service Act, which uh, indicate that I uh, uh, would be responsible for disciplinary matters with respect to the head of department, but other officials uh, disciplinary matters are executed by the accounting uh, officer. Um, and of course, uh, we will always endeavor to uh, follow uh, the legal prescripts, the laws that have been passed by parliament and the relevant uh, regulations. Um, 
And as I said, uh, where in fact it is possible for me to inform the committee, I would. Uh, I do think it's important uh, that I don't in any way uh, infringe the process uh, that is underway and that I do ensure that we implement according to all prescripts. And as I indicated, uh, once I have uh, detail uh, with respect to these uh, actions, I am going to come back through you, Chairperson, to request uh, that I do address the committee. Uh, I note Mr. Faber's comments, uh, and again, it's within the committee's own uh, uh, rules and procedures as to how that would be addressed. And again, I do appeal uh, uh, to the committee and uh, to Ms. Swartz that uh, I really am unable to say this is the reason. It just uh, is not permissible for me to do so uh, uh, in this uh, context. But as I say, I would uh, uh, come back. Uh, I have indicated uh, um, the matter of precautionary suspension with pay. And I think, Chairperson, with your permission, I, I should leave it at that. Chairperson, I again thank you very much. Honorable members, uh, that was the suspension by Honorable Swartz. Your hand was up earlier. Can I lower it? Why is it still up now? I put it up again, Chair. What's the issue? Chair, I just want to say that it means that um, the DG's precautionary suspension has got no meat or head into it or head and tail, just like it's happening here in the committee, understanding the minister saying she cannot say whether it's New York or not. We take it that the minister, the DG suspension letter is just suspension you will see when we have finished investigated so that uh, our minds are settled, Chair. That's all I want to say because in the media everywhere, it's New York from Terco. But when we ask whether it's based on New York, 118 million irregular expenditure, the minister is unable to respond so that uh, as a member, Chair, some of us are not that strong, Chair, maybe. Because we'll be mulling over these things in our heads, just so that other committee members, when they hear that we are not well, they must know that we'll be trying to make heads of tails of something since 2019. So we take it, Chair, that there was nothing written on reasons for suspend, precautionary suspension from the minister to the DG. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Banza, can we wrap up our meeting, guys? Yes, Chair. Chair, Chair thanks very much. Uh, I really want to support that, but I, I can't give this one not clarified. The issue that I'm raising, Chair, in terms of management is not uh, the issue of how the minister had, uh, dealt with the issue of suspension and all those things. I know that is her prerogative. But I'm talking in terms of communication and issues being uh, uh, spoken to media when we don't know anything about those things because it's the department uh, that the media was referring to that they've uh, had they were told by the media that is suspended and this is the reason so I was saying that uh, as far as media and communication that one must be uh, managed very well that's the one that was not managed very well not the actual uh, suspensions and all those things. Thanks, Chair. Okay, thank you very much, uh, honorable members, uh, for your time. And thank you, Minister, for um, availing yourself uh, for this uh, important engagement uh, with the Portfolio Committee. Uh, honorable Mola, it's clear that uh, the spokesperson uh, lied before us uh, today and we are not going to allow him to respond whether it's him or not or whether he was misquoted or what by the media because we know he's going to say he was quoted out of context or misquoted 
but seeing is believing and we read uh, you read what uh, he said uh, in the media uh, so um i take it as if uh, there's a general feeling uh, by the portfolio committee members uh, that we have a session uh, with the minister which is going to be a closed session uh, so that she is able to take us through on every aspect of uh, these uh, matters uh, which we raised today uh, in this uh, particular uh, portfolio uh, committee and that the information uh, which we requested uh, honorable members we get in the absence of the letter which the minister wrote to the president as requested uh, by the portfolio committee that uh, the minister provides the committee with the contents, contents of the letter and the letter itself, which enabled the president to give her delegated powers to suspend the DG. I think as a portfolio committee, we also have a right uh, to request the letter from the office of the president and uh, perhaps request the letter from DPSA as well. Uh, so that we have those contents, uh, because clearly the minister is refusing uh, to give us uh, that particular letter so that we are able uh, to move on and implement uh, our oversight role and do our work as a portfolio committee, because all we want as a portfolio committee, as stipulated uh, on chapter seven of SMS that fairness and non-discriminatory uh, procedure and processes uh, should be undertaken in whatever disciplinary uh, processes that are there. Uh, so for us to be able as a portfolio committee to see whether the recommendations um, of the portfolio committee on New York are not abused, we must request uh, the letters from those two um, offices, the office of the president and uh, DPSA uh, officially in writing uh, because the minister can't provide such uh, for us and it bothers on our oversight role. So uh, the, our team, uh, after this meeting, we must work on that ensure that uh, letters are sent uh, so that we are able to to do our work as for ambassador uh, Matsila uh, appearing uh, before the committee it is something that we must discuss in our portfolio committee and uh, close the session uh, of the portfolio committee um, that is uh, will be able to get to uh, discuss uh, whether also uh, the former minister should be um, requested to appear before the portfolio committee on a number of cases uh, which were erased here. But I believe that when you are assigned to a responsibility, you take that responsibility with, with its baggages. Uh, I am not sure we are going to check uh, if we are uh, allowed to do that. And then if uh, we are allowed, then we will be able to call uh, the former minister to the portfolio committee. Um, thank you so much, uh, honorable members, uh, for availing yourself for this important meeting. Uh, thank you so much, Minister, with your team uh, for remaining with us here uh, for the duration of the meeting, even though uh, you have another meeting after this one. We really appreciate uh, your time and uh, the engagements uh, with you uh, as the portfolio committee. Uh, honorable members, uh, the meeting is adjourned. Um, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah.
Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable members. Yeah,